In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first take a moment to recognize our need for God's grace, for his mercy, forgiveness, pardon, and grace to do better as we continue our journey to holiness. I confess, Almighty God, God, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, and her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead, 
Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as you leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that is, Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord.
The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Every Sunday we are uh, offered four scriptural passages for our consideration, our prayer, our reflection. And usually there is a, a, a single theme that is trying to bring together all of these four readings. Usually an Old Testament, although during Easter time we don't see an Old Testament reading except in the Psalms, and the Psalm and New Testament reading and the Gospel. And this particular week, there is a theme that is, is very, very prevalent, very, very obvious. It's not subtle at all. And it's found in our, our reading from the letter of John, the actual words of the reading in the letter of John. Jesus Christ is the expiation for our sins, not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. His suffering and death, in a sense, made it possible for us to establish or re-establish that intimacy with God that was meant by God at the creation of the world. Now, we can see that in the scriptures, but sometimes it's nice to find little stories that can help us uh, take that theme and make it applicable to our contemporary world. One of the ways I like to do that, and I think a good number of people like to do it, and I might suggest it might not be a bad idea for you to do it, is to read some children's books. Because some of the stories we find in children's books have some tremendously beautiful applications for our faith. One of the stories that I read a long time ago, uh, well, not so long ago, but a while ago, uh, has to do with a, a young boy uh, who had this this pension for, for boats and ships, and he wanted to build uh, a little sailboat that could actually float, and so he got all the instructions that he needed, and he created this beautiful, maybe foot and a half sailboat. And it was indeed beautiful. It was something with, with uh, or that this young uh, uh, a boy fell in love with, and he actually named the boat, and he named the boat Michael. And some folks might say, Michael, why Michael? Well, he knew the song, Michael, row the boat ashore, and that's where it came from. Uh, and he named the boat Michael, but it was gorgeous. Built perfectly, according to every instruction that he could get, and then painted beautifully. Well, the day came when the boat was finished, and he decided it was time to go down to the lake, and to, in a sense, uh, send the boat off uh, and to float. But of course, he didn't want to send the boat off without any possibility of getting it back, so he tied a string to it, put the boat into the lake. It floated beautifully. It was built according to every specification that it should have been, and the sail 
you know, just caught the wind and the boat started to move across the lake. But the string still was part of his hand. Well, the boat got a little further out and a strong gust of wind just came and snapped that string away. But the boat kept going and going and going and before you knew it, he could see it no longer. He was heartbroken. He was in utmost pain because of all of the work that had been put in this and the fact that he loved doing it and he loved the result of his work. But the boat was gone. Well, he came back every day for the next couple of weeks looking at the lake, looking at the possibility of finding this boat. No luck. No luck at all. A few months later, he's walking down the streets of his town and he passes this arts and crafts store and he sees in a window this sailboat and he sees the name Michael written across the boat. That's my boat! He goes into the store and he tells the store owner, well, that boat in the window is mine. I built it. And the owner of the store says, well, son, that's, that's very nice, but you know, I bought that boat because it was so beautiful uh, from another young man who brought it in a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but he says, it's mine. He says, well, I'm sorry, but I bought it from him. If you want that boat, you're going to have to give me what I paid for the boat. Well, the kid had no money, and so he's heartbroken again, but he says, I'm going to get that boat. And he went out and he did every kind of odd job that he could find. Some of it very, very difficult. Some of it uh, really broke his heart to have to do it. He suffered in doing all of these little odd jobs to get the money to buy back the boat. Well, the day came, he had the money, he goes to the store and he purchases the boat and brings it home with him and he says, finally, Michael, you are mine. Once again, you are mine. And that's where the story ends. We might say, well, it's a nice story, but what has that got to do with faith? Well, it has a lot to do with faith, if you look at it. We are the boat. You and I, the people. The boy is the Son of God, Jesus. The string is the relationship between the Son of God and us, broken by an evil wind, broken by the power of evil that broke the relationship between the boy and the boat. But the boy was in love with that boat and he wasn't going to stop until he was able to say, as he finally did, as he held the boat in his hands, you are mine. Once again, you are mine. It's a story that perhaps can bring the theological concept to a level that children can understand. And for many of us, it makes it easier for us to understand. You know, sometimes our faith gets, gets written about in so many ways that it's, it's rather difficult to understand. I don't know how many of you would know some of the you know, theologians of the last century. I think of Karl Rahner, who I had to study when I was in seminary, and I think now that Karl Rahner is in heaven having conversations with Jesus, trying to explain to Jesus what he meant when he wrote all of this stuff in this theology book. But the story is basically simple. But if we listen to the words of today's gospel at the end, there is a call of Jesus to the apostles for repentance. In other words, there is something, there is something that is expected of those who have been found and redeemed where God can say, once again, you are mine. There is something that God expects. What is it that God wants of us? Well, people have written all kinds of things and preached all kinds of ways in which we can respond to God. One of the ways that I have found most pertinent for myself
comes from one of the books of the Bible. And I might suggest you might want to, to look at it. It's the book in the Old Testament from the prophet Micah. Now some of you might be saying, Micah, who is the prophet Micah? Some of us may never have heard of him. Oh, we know of Isaiah because we hear the readings all the time. We know the prophet Jeremiah, we've heard that story. And Micah was a prophet, a contemporary of Isaiah and Jeremiah. And his prophetic book is very short. It's only about seven or eight chapters. But it sort of portrays the story of God's people in a broken relationship with God and a relationship that is restored with God. And then the prophet in chapter 6, I'm sorry, chapter 7. No, chapter 6, the 7th verse. The 7th verse of chapter 6. The prophet answers the question that has been given. The question is, what is it that God wants of us? What kind of a return should I give to the Lord? And the prophet answers that question with just three things. The prophet says there are only three things that are necessary. Number one, act justly. You may say, oh, that, well, that's nice, justly. But think of it. Think of how all-encompassing that term is. <clears throat> act justly. How do we act justly with God? In other words, giving to God all that is due. How do we act justly with each other? Treating every other human being justly. Acting justly with God's creation. This earth, this world that God has given to us. And all of the creatures and all of the elements of this world. How do we act justly with that? My goodness, how expansive is just that one suggestion that Micah, Micah offers. Number two, love tenderly. Well, think of the words. Tenderly is perhaps a little bit easier to understand than the first word. Love. What is love? Oh, my goodness. People have written volumes on that. And there are all kinds of definitions of what is love, some of which are really kind of weird. <laughs> We see bumper stickers, I love pizza. Oh my goodness, I love my dog. Okay, that's all nice. Being a northerner, uh, I like the one that says, I love New York. Uh, <laughs> but they don't say very much about what love really is. Then, of course, we've got the soap opera version of love. That's not love at all, that's simply manipulation. And, uh, but what is it? What? does this word love really mean? Well, many, many years ago, I heard a definition that really stuck with me, and it's the only definition after all of these years that makes any kind of sense. Definition of love is to effectively will the true good of another. Effectively. Not just wishing it, but doing things to make sure that it comes true, effectively will the true good of another. Not looking at what am I going to get out of this relationship of love, but what can I give? That's really what love is all about. And then Prophet Micah says, act justly, number one. Number two, love tenderly, with compassion, with understanding. Again, how encompassing is all of that? And the third thing that the, Micah, that the prophet Micah offers is walk humbly with your God. How do we walk humbly? Well, recognizing that God is God and I am not. Some of us, and I say us, meaning human society, sees themselves as God. And that's not walking humbly with God. Well, think of it. Act justly, love tenderly, walk humbly with God. Jesus taught what justice was all about. That's what his preaching is all about. He tells us to love, to love one another as God loves us, unconditionally. 
and he recognizes his relationship with his father, with God the Father, and is always humble in that relationship, always going to the Father for this sense of keeping the connection alive. So as we celebrate this Easter season, the scriptures are trying to tell us, keep the connection alive. This God who loves us so much lives with us. He created this world. He sent his son to redeem us and sends the Holy Spirit to dwell within us that we might find the ability to act justly and love tenderly and walk humbly with God and thus hopefully find a sense of peace and joy and fulfillment as we walk this journey of life. That's what God wants of us. That's what God gives us all the grace to do. The answer to the question, though, of course, is can we accept it? Can we respond in the way the prophet Micah tells us we ought to respond because this is what God wants, to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with our God. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. Christ meant for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, what was in front of the Virgin Mary, and he came down. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is well spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism of the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people of faith, we seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. With confidence that God will hear our prayers, let us now present our petitions. For the church throughout the world, that through her teachings and witness, many may embrace the truth of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and all who preach the gospel, and for all who hear their message around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority in government and commerce, that they make their decisions based on prayerful discernment of God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That is, we recognize Jesus in broken bread, so we may recognize him in broken lives, including those we consider burdensome, inconvenient, and unwanted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the witness of this parish community to the risen Christ may echo into our neighborhoods, schools, and workplaces, inviting others to believe the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those discerning a vocation to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, or religious life, especially within our diocese, may respond generously to God's call and our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs and intentions of Jace Fargo, which we pray for in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our brothers and sisters who have died may share in the heavenly banquet prepared for them by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, as you hear and answer our prayers, grant us the grace to endure all that comes to us in this life. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
Jacques, our bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Thomas More and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. 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 Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of any children on earth, but only say the word, and my soul shall be those participating uh, through, uh, through streaming, we pray. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. (laughs) 
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, briefly, for you uh, college students, we have hamburgers and fixings uh, for Sunday service this evening, uh, provided by the Knights. So please come join us after the 5 p.m. Mass. Get here about five minutes to six, get the first hot burgers. Um, please pray for our retreatants for the spring retreat that are returning home uh, very soon for safe travels and spiritual depth and growth as they ponder what they received this past weekend. And a special thanks to Bishop Giuliani for celebrating with us this weekend. I never get an invitation from Father Rhett to that 5 o'clock Mass with the meal. <laughs> he tells me, go home after the 11. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in sorrow, be our protection against the wickedness of sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, Father of our God, cast into the hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, we prowl about the world, seeking the room of souls. Yeah.